Hey everybody, welcome to a very special interview here on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. Today's chat, if you haven't been able to see from my guest, is about development. And I've got Luke Power with me, who is the head of development at the club. Luke, really appreciate your time today, mate. Thanks for having us, Terry. It's, it's lovely to meet you. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we get into it, how are you going? There's a new role that's opened up and you've got a few more duties and responsibilities. How are you juggling what was already a pretty big role? Yeah, I must say, mate, when when um, when John decided um, to, to 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 leave and and to pursue other interests, um, I, I spoke to Lloydie and, and Lloydie asked me if I'd uh, if I'd go and help with the midfield group and, and help Brent Stanton, who, who's doing a really good job at the moment with them, and I'm there to support him. But I, I must say, I got uh, from friends and, and family and the like. I got a lot of text messages congratulating me on the uh, on the promotion but uh, which which I had to laugh about because I'm, I'm really passionate about the role I do um, in terms of, of development and and developing and, and supporting our young players to get the best out of themselves so hopefully that's uh, that's where I end up because I think that that's where where my strengths lie so um, but enjoying the role at the moment um, obviously a couple of wins of have helped the cause and yeah, hopefully uh, we, we can continue a, a bit of this momentum and, and um, you know, ha have a good couple of months of footy. Yeah, absolutely. I think winning cures everything almost <laughs> just about. <laughs> it does. Um, I will get straight into it. I'd love to have you for an hour or so, but we don't have, uh, we don't have that. Um, there's a few, few key questions and I guess the reason for the chat was we wanted to talk about development um, of players and, and, and the like on the inside and obviously get some, get some intel about things that the fans don't necessarily get to, to see every day. Um, I guess one of, the, one of the, the main things I notice about commentary from fans is um, potentially some confusion amongst um, players being you know, played out of position, um, potentially learning different traits that what they were drafted to do. I think Petrescu Seaton's the most recent example. Stocker seems to be brought up um, playing behind the ball and, and Paddy Dow until recently. Um, can you shed some light on the philosophy of that and um, if it will evolve? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a supporter of, of playing players in different positions. I think if they have certain attributes, then, um, you know, that they should um, as professional players but be able to go across different lines. Um, it also gives them gives them options i mean i'm you know i'm probably one that the, the fans wouldn't wouldn't love too much in in the fact that um you know when, when i played um you know i think one of the reasons why i had a long career was that it was the fact that i could play forward back in mid i ended up playing two grand finals um you know on the half back line um, for the Lions after after not having played much there during the year so um, i believe it's something that players should be able to do and and that that players um should be really positive about it because it, it gives them um you know extra strings to their to, to their game um you know obviously the, there's a there's a few examples um samo you mentioned I, I know that liam stock has um brought up a fair bit but I, I sort of think that it'll be fantastic for them going and and doing spending time um down back learning to grow the defensive side of their game and you know long term um, you know, and there's a bit of water to go under the bridge, but but we we still believe that that Liam could could come back into the midfield. Um, but at the moment, um, you know, what a what a great way for him to to learn his football, and he's really thriving in that role at the moment. Um, in terms of Samo, I probably wasn't at the club when when he got put into that halfback role. Um, but if you look at what Samo does really well, um, you know, he's a very instinctual player. Um, you know, sometimes it, it's a really good way um, on the half back line to be able to give players a bit of room to to use the ball, and he's he's a very good decision maker and kicker the ball. And I think when he was back there in in the 2020 season, um, he was the, the leading player in the AFL for for ground ball gets, which is which is no mean feat. So uh, he certainly has the attributes to do it. I, I think you know over, over recent weeks we, we've probably made the decision. Um, to, to free him up a little bit and just to let him play a little bit more. And uh, as I said before, before he's a very instinctual player and, and we want to try and get him back to that um, as, as much as possible. So we've sort of backed him into to play in some positions higher up the ground. Yeah. Is, is it sort of born out of, I think there's a notion with, with um, you either go all in on your strengths or you try and build on your weaknesses. Is it a little bit of that just to become the overall package? 
Um, no, a little bit. Like the, the most important thing that we, you know, we want to promote is is for players to to come and play to their strengths. There's a reason why, you know, they they've been selected to be on our list, and and that's that's usually due, due to the uh, to to, the, to their strengths and what they do really well. So, you know, we want to promote that as as much as possible. Um, they certainly need to get, um, you know, their areas for improvement, um, so to speak, to a level. Um, you, you know, you know that's that's able to, to 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 make them competitive and 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 to be consistent at AFL level. So there's certainly an, an, an element, but I think, you know, most of most of our coaching and most of the coaching now in you know, not just in the AFL but in in world sport is is around you know what are your strengths and and how do we promote them and and, and get the most from those strengths. Mm. No, it makes sense. Yeah, you've been at the club for I think. A good enough time now to get a solid sample size of of everything. Um, what are let's say three of the most notable traits you, you've you've noticed from when you first walked into now about the playing group and their everyday values or or work ethic or values that you just think are notable? Yeah. Well, firstly, um, one of the Terry, one of the reasons that um, you know that I was keen to come to Carlton Football Club. Um, was that I went to a I went to an AFL PA um, awards night um, um, at the end of 2019, um, and after 2019, I think um, I think Cripple was voted as the um, you know the the best player um, at that awards night. I think Sam Walsh um, was voted as the best first year player. But the thing that um, stood out to me was that almost every player on the Carlton list was there. Um, in support of those guys, and to me that was that was pretty special, and that was something that I really wanted to be um, part of. So there's a there's a genuine care um, care there for for, for for each other and 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 amongst the playing group, and and that was that was something that was really evident that night. You know, from a pretty small sample size, but but those things to me, um, you know, are important, um, especially you know when when you're probably looking to get back into the to the AFL system and and you're looking um you know what clubs are out there it was something that 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 really resonated with me so that was that was my first impression and and that's that's probably carried through I know everything hasn't gone our way um over the past two years um but the way that the the group um has managed to rebound and, and dust themselves up and off and support each other and 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 support our staff has you know has has been really pleasing it's 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 not always easy um you know there's a lot going on and, and obviously there's a lot of dialogue and and conversations around carlton football club when 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 the side's not playing well so i feel like um you know the investment um, from our players um, in each other and the club ha- has been really, really good. Um, they're a very, very diligent, um, you know, group. Um, you know, they're, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty and and, and get to work. And um, yeah, really good listeners. They're they're inquisitive. Um, they want to learn. They've, they've got a real growth mindset, and um, they're keen to to get better and, and find ways to get better all the time. So they, you know, they're constantly. Um, I don't know whether it's it's this generation or the, the players at this club, but it's you know they're constantly after information um, to get better, which is something that we have to manage because obviously um, you know you got to be careful about how much information you give young players because you don't also don't want to cloud their minds, but you want to be able to show them um, you know the right direction and support them uh, along their journey. Yeah. No, it makes sense. I, I think we are definitely in the information age. It's coming at us quick and fast daily. Um, when you get away from the club, our devices now throw it notifications at us all the time. So yeah, that that's really interesting. And I guess relative to you know your experience, you've been you know in a very successful locker room at the Brisbane Lions. Um, what do you think are two or three areas that you still think need to evolve for us to take that next you know that next big leap? Um, I think it's the consistency is the, the, the most important one at the moment. I think everyone would agree, and you know, I'd be surprised if our, our, our fans and, and supporter base didn't, that, it, that our best is pretty good, mm. um, and, and, it, and, it, and it can really stand up. I mean, I saw a stat the other day, and you know, I don't want to sort of bore you with stats, but, but I think you know, in the last two years, um, you know, we're the only team that hasn't, hasn't lost by less than, than what our, our lowest loss 
or our highest losses, which is I think 36 points over the last two years. Um, so there's, there's definitely some really good things happening. Um, you know, it's just been um, little, little have faded at times in games and, um, you know, haven't been able to execute in certain times of games that have, that have probably um, cost us a little bit. So I guess this, the focus for us is, is to be able to maintain, um, you know, firstly our intensity, um, but, but also our, our mindset, um, you know, over four quarters um, so that we're not letting oppositions, um, get a jump on us or we're not letting oppositions back into the game. Um, so that's something that that we've been working really hard on, you know, from a strategic point of view in terms of our football and tactical point of view, but also um, from a mindset point of view where, where our um, in-house psychologist, Tara Kavanagh, does a lot of sessions with the players and, and is, is, is fantastic in, in the way that she, um, you know, that she firstly... Um, sells to them the importance of of developing, um, you know, the mindset as much as developing your, your football craft. Um, yeah, but also um, just the information that that she does provide is has been really good. Yeah, what what's your philosophy on on that mentality, or I guess more so that intrinsic motivation? Like, is that something you can develop, or a player's just I mean, I guess from the outside looking in, you look at a guy like Sam Walsh, he just looks like he's driven all the time to just yeah. put himself into the ground. How do you manage, you know, there's 44 on the list or 40, 40 plus. How do you manage yeah. that motivation with each individual? Yeah, that's interesting. Probably one of the things that I was going to say off the, off the back of the consistency is well, we've got a lot of really good people um, at this football club, um, you know, from, from the top down. Um you know, we went into a hub. My first year was was last year, and we we're in a hub for for a hundred days. And and the way that the club, um, you know, and the players and and the people at the club supported, um, you know, myself and my family. I, I feel like I'm I'm indebted um, to the club for the for the way that um, you know the way that I was treated, but more, more importantly, the way that my family were treated because they didn't come um, up to Queensland with us. And and you know, I I don't think there was. There was a, a day that went past when someone was checking in on them and, and making sure they, was, they were all right. So there's a, there's a lot of really good people at the club. Um, I, I find that that we have a lot of nice players um, who who at this stage are, are learning, um, you know, the the importance, um, you know, or, or learning how to separate um, their off field personalities and and their on field personalities that'll that'll take a little bit of time i remember um i remember i'll go back to brisbane i'm sorry to uh to go back to old, no, old war store but it's welcome. <laughs> I, remember, I, I remember at brisbane um you know one of the one of the greatest lessons I, I ever got was was from lee matthews who uh in my third year at the club um he he, he basically said who you are on and off the field don't have to be the same person um, and I considered myself to be a pretty empathetic, caring um, person. And for me, that was like a, a weight off my shoulders in, in terms of my football. It was, it was almost like, you, you mean to say that I don't, I don't have to, you know, be the same person, um, you know, on the field that I, that, that I am off the field. Um, and, and off the back of that, um, you know, it, it just allowed me just to go out and play and, 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 you know, be aggressive and and be competitive. So, I think there's some players in on our on our list at the moment. They're still um, still learning that. But I, I think um, you know, as you can see from from a number of our players um, this year, um, that they are starting to to get it and, and their form, um, you know, off the back of it is 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 starting to reflect that. So, um, in in terms of um, intrinsic. Uh, motivation. I, I think the most important thing, um, instead of totally developing it in players, is is making them understand what their motivation is, um, and helping them to sup- help help them and and supporting them with that motivation. Um, so that's probably um, you know what we're trying to do more than trying to grow it in players. Um, you know, obviously when they come in the door, our, our recruiting department, um, you know, are establishing what players have that intrinsic motivation and what players don't, but when they are with us, um, you know, we're trying to work with them, um, you know, to make them understand how to, to use that motivation, um, you know, extrinsic motivation. We're, we're, hopefully they're not too, 
um, you know, too motivated by ex- extrinsic uh, extrinsic things, um, and and that they do have that that inner desire um, to get better and and to win games of football inevitably. No, that's that's really good insight. Really good insight. Um, I've got one more for you, and I guess it's more around again philosophy around you know players and 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 getting games of footy and you know the balance between earning it in the one in earning it through the twos and then um, developing in the ones. Um, I think there is also a little bit of confusion around you know drafting high quality players um, and then they're not playing in the one straight away. So I guess the question is, what's the philosophy around getting games and where do you see that line being drawn from, you know, getting games to develop and then you're not ready yet. You've got to work on what you've got to work on. Yeah. So, so the first part of that is I think, um, I think um, when Teague initially took over in 2019, um, the club and the, and the football department, you know, made made a decision um, that we had given a, a lot of games to players when they probably weren't ready, um, and it's really important that that when we bring players into the side, um, you know, yes, we want to de- get development into them and give them experience, um, but we also want to set them up to succeed. Um, so when they do come into the side, you know, we need to make sure that they're ready. And that's definitely a track that we've, we've gone down in the p- past couple of years. And, and off the back of it, I think when players are coming in, that they're, they're more prepared. I use the example of Liam Stocker and, and Matt Owies um, this year. Um, you know, they, they are more prepared to, to perform, um, you know, because, because their performances and, and, and the way they've gone about out their footy and prepared um, in the reserves has has been at a really high level and and you know that's that's then reflected in their performances at AFL level. So um, you know, in answer to that question, I, I think it's um, there's a balance. Like yes, at times we need to get games into players um, to get them to that that mark where we get to see the best of them. Um, but also we, we we need to set them up to succeed and we need to give them give them every opportunity to do well when they do come in. So that's, um, yeah, that's something that we balance with all the time, but, but definitely something that we are mindful of. Um, uh, the, the other part um, to the question, can you just remind me what the other part of Yeah, it was just question? about the balance of, you, you sort of, you really did touch on it, getting games in the ones to see how they could handle yeah. that pressure as opposed to not being ready yet. You've got to develop in the twos. And um, I guess, where do you draw the line? Is it just a judgment call on, yeah. on what you're seeing at training or, or in games? I'll probably answer that. Probably the, probably the second part to it was um, you made a comment about there being a lot of high draft picks mm. uh, who are in the reserves. Um, I, look at the, at the moment, um, yeah, we had seven players, seven listed players in our reserves Um Last week, um, you know, we've had 13 operations um, this year, um, which hasn't been which hasn't been ideal. Um, you know, I guess the exciting thing for fans is that Charlie Kerno, um, you know, will hopefully make an appearance in the next month, um, which which is which is really pleasing because you know there's no one that provides more energy, um, you know, and has more impact around the place in terms of the way that he approaches his football and. Than, than Charlie and I guess Carlton fans would would remember more, more than me, um, you know what he's capable of. So, yeah, last week we had we had seven players, we got thirteen uh, had thirteen surgeries, so a lot of injuries at the moment. Out of those seven players, um, three of them um, were first year players. Um, so Parks, Dirt, and 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 Jack Carroll, who were developing really well. Mm. Um, the other three were second year players. Um, so um, Josh Honey. Um, Sam Ramsey um, and Brody Kemp. Um, out of those guys, Brody Kemp um, is the highest draft pick. And obviously, um, before we bring Brody into the side, as I said before, we, we need to set him up to succeed. He's he's had a really um, interrupted couple of years um, in terms of his his football, and it's and it's really important that that we make sure that. You know, before we look at him for AFL selection, we, we we really make sure that you know that his preparation's right and his body's right and his his mindset's right. Um, you know, to be able to play consistently um, because it's going to be the thing that sets him up to to succeed. Um, so that there's six of the seven. The the other one, um, you know, is is Lockie O'Brien. 
um, you know, who, who's a high draft pick from four years ago, you know, and we're, we're, we're really keen, um, you know, over, over the, the next couple of, couple of weeks to, to, to hopefully get Lockie back into the team. But, but we need to make sure, um, you know, before we do that, 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 you know, he's, his football's at a, at a really good level. So again, we're setting him up to play well when he comes in. Hmm. I guess the, the overall word that comes to mind when I, when I, sort of reflect on the chat we've just had is patience, which is really a word that's almost sacrosanct amongst fans where we can be impatient yeah. at times. Um, but I, I mean, I think you sort of have to have that short-term pain. Uh, I guess it's that delayed gratification for that long-term success. Um, yes, yes, it, yes, it is. But as I've said before, um, you know, the, the, our greatest area for growth is, is, is our consistency and and there haven't been too many games um, you know where we haven't played decent football um, it's just being able to to maintain that across you know the, the length of quarters and the length of games so um, you know once we once we start to do that it's I, I think the supporters um, and the fans are gonna are gonna get a lot of enjoyment so um, yeah I, I guess I guess Patience is is, uh, is is probably the right word, um, but but also we want them to understand that that we're not we're not being patient either. Like we want success um, as much as they do, and we're working every day, um, you know, and our players and our staff and, and everyone involved working every every day to get better and um, and to be able to get results and and to be able to represent the Carlton Football Club the the way that it should be represented. Yeah. No, that's that's great to hear, Luke. Listen, I, I really appreciate you making yourself available for the chat. I think I think such conversations are, are really valuable for the fan base just to get that little bit of insight. Um, I guess when you talk to mainstream media, and it, it can seem there's certain there's certain ways you communicate there, whereas this really feels like a direct chat, and I'm sure a lot of the fans will will appreciate that. So thank you so much for your time, and fingers crossed, we're talking about a win against the Cats this weekend. No, exactly. That's the that's the number one thing. Yeah, and, and mainstream media you mentioned before is yeah is 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 interesting, and you know probably even the education with with it, with our players even more so is is other forms of media like social media. I mean, it's never been greater, and there's a lot of commentary and and dialogue and 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 a lot of um, you know people now um, you know can get their opinions out there. So um, you know. It's it's just really important that you know that we maintain focus on you know on 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 what's gonna what's gonna get us there at the end of the day and and um, yeah I can I can leave you assured that um, you know we're doing everything possible to 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 be able to uh, to put on a really good show for our members every week. Love it, love it. Have a great one, Luke, and um, Thanks, all Gary. the best. Yeah, good on you, mate. <laughs>